good morning students today we are on the third and last part of the first chapter of class 10th history the first war of indian independence in the previous two videos we were discussing about the causes of the outbreak of the first war of indian independence after the causes in the textbook there is a topic given events of the war this topic is not included in the syllabus that is why i am skipping that topic and moving to the last topic of the first chapter the consequences of the first war of indian independence we studied that this revolt of 1857 started as a revolution among the sepoys remember a sepoy is an indian soldier in the british army gradually this revolt started among the sepoys were spread into other sections of the society anyhow these revolutionaries were not able to expel the british from india but this incident the first war of indian independence caused for so many changes these changes are given under the heading consequences of the first war of indian independence in the textbook there are 13 points given each of these points are explained in a powerpoint presentation that is attached to this video so let's see which are the important consequences of the first war of indian independence the first consequence or the first result is the end of the company's rule the end of the company's rule is given in another heading the provisions of government of india act of 1858 so sometimes the question can come what were the provisions of the government of india act of 1858 for that you have to write the sub points given under the heading the end of the company's rule the second consequence is queen victoria's proclamation in the year 1858 the empress of britain queen victoria made a historic proclamation that proclamation contained some of the changes which are going to be held in the administrative system of india the third result third consequence is end of mughals and peshwas the two leading dynasties of india the mughal empire and the maratha empire came to an end with the revolt of 1857 then fourth result is relations with the princely states at the time of the revolt of 1857 some indian states some indian princes remained loyal to the british they supported the british for crushing the revolt of 1857 so they were rewarded what were the rewards given to them we are going to study under the heading relations with the princely states then fifth result is the policy of divide and rule the british already used the method of divide and rule between hindus and muslims after the revolt of 1857 they made it more systematic then sixth result is racial antagonism or racial superiority then seventh consequence is foreign policy the foreign policy of india was designed and dictated by britain after the revolt of 1857 then eighth result is increased racial bitterness somewhat similar to racial antagonism the europeans considered themselves as superior to the indian people the ninth one is religious changes one of the reasons for the outbreak of the revolt of 1857 was the activities of the missionaries and interference of the british in the religious affairs of india 
the british changed that policy the 10th one is changes in the army it is an important point under the heading changes in the army there are so many sub points you have to learn you must learn four or five points under the heading changes in the army then 11th consequence is economic exploitation then 12th one is rise of nationalism one of the main result of the revolt of 1857 is the rise of nationalism this due to the revolt of 1857 the mentality of the people indian people changed this the sacrifice and heroic deeds of the the personalities like nana sahib tandiya tope and rani lakshmi bai inspired millions of people for the next century and it resulted in the achievement of independence from the british then last one the 13th one is widening of the gulf between hindus and muslims due to the implementation of the policy of divide and rule the wedge between the hindus and muslims were widened so these are the 13 consequences of the result, uh, revolt of 1857 each of these points are uh, explained well in the powerpoint presentation that powerpoint po presentation is attached to this video now let's move to that video the consequences of the first war of indian independence the first consequence is end of the company's rule it means some changes took place in the administrative system of india soon after the first war of indian independence these changes are given as points or the provisions of the government of india act of 1858 the first provision of the government of india act of 1858 was it transferred the power to govern india from east india company to the british crown second the company's board of control and court of directors were abolished and the power was to be exercised by the secretary of the state for india aided by a council third point the post of the governor general was to be changed into the post of viceroy lord canning was the first viceroy of india fourth point the appointments to the civil service were to be made by open competition under the rules made by the secretary of state the second consequence is queen victoria's proclamation queen victoria was the empress of england queen victoria's proclamation promised the following things first one to follow a policy of non intervention in social and religious matters of indians second to treat all subjects indians and europeans as equals third grant a general pardon to all those who had take part taken part in the war except those who were found guilty of murder of british subjects for the point to do its best to advance the industries in india third result end of mughals and peshwas the two leading dynasties of india the mughals and marathas came to an end with the revolt of 1857 with the death of bahadur shah zafar in yangon the mughal dynasty came to an end nana sahib the adopted son of peshwa bajirao ii escaped to nepal after the failure of the uprising 
Fourth result, relations with princely states. The Indian princes who had remained loyal to the British were rewarded. Their right to adopt heirs were respected. The policy of annexation was abandoned. The princes became junior partners or agents of the British crown. The fifth result, policy of divide and rule. After 1858, the British continued their policy of divide and rule. They turned princes against the people, province against province, caste against caste, and Hindus against the Muslims. They alienated the people from their rulers by giving them special protections and concessions. Sixth result, racial antagonism means racial superiority. The British believed that they are superior than the Indians. They kept a social distance with the Indians to preserve their authority over the Indians. Railway compartments, parks, hotels, clubs, etc., reserved for the Europeans only were the visible manifestation of this racialism. Seventh result, foreign policy. India's foreign policy was designed and dictated by the British government. There were two major aims for dictating and designing the foreign policy of India. The first one, it was for the protection of the Indian Empire and second one, it was for the expansion of British economic and commercial interest in Asia and Africa. Eighth result, increased racial bitterness. After the uprising of 1857, racial bitterness increased. The British dubbed all the Indians as unworthy of trust. People were subjected to insults and humiliation. Ninth result, religious changes. The British rulers declared emphatically their policy of non-interference in the religious affairs, customs and traditions of the Indians. Tenth result, changes in the army. Following changes were taken place in the army after the revolt of 1857. The first one, the strength of European troops in India was increased. The second, European troops were kept in key geographical and military positions. Third, all sophisticated weapons and ammunition were never placed under the charge of Indians. Fourth, in order to discourage nationalism, measures such as introduction of caste and community in most regiments were taken. Eleventh result, economic exploitation. Economic exploitation continued after the revolt of 1857 in the following ways. First one, India was turned into a typical colonial economy, exporting raw materials and importing finished goods. Second, peasants were impoverished under the British rule. Third, rural artisan industries such as handicrafts, spinning and weaving collapsed. Fourth, the Indians had to pay heavy interest and dividends on the British capital invested in India. Twelfth result, rise of nationalism. The uprising of 1857 paved the way for the rise of national movement. 
the sacrifices made by rani lakshmi bai nana sahib and mangal pande served as a source of inspiration for the future freedom fighters the last and 13th consequence of the revolt of 1857 widening of the gulf between hindus and muslims during the first war of independence both the hindus and muslims fought together against the british the unity between the hindus and muslims was a threat for the british to break the unity between hindus and muslims the british used the divide and rule policy successfully so this is the end of the third video and the first chapter the videos of the second chapter will be uploaded soon thank you